University is definitely in a crisis. University nowadays is pretty much like the Catholic Church in the past. There is no salvation if you don't go to university. The truth is not that. You can learn a lot of physics and math without university. Can you share a bit of your background and how you became interested in math and physics? When I was in school, I always liked math and physics. Why? Because I think our brains feel a little bit of satisfaction when we are solving a problem and it's hard. It's a challenge, but you can solve it. And then there is a little bit of satisfaction from it. And also because our brains are structured to recognize patterns. I always liked math and physics. What I liked about physics specifically was the fact that I could take all this analytical mindset and apply to the real world and also find solutions for improving our lives. I, I felt always that there was this kind of mystery in the universe and physics helped us somehow to understand the big questions be like why the world is the way it is is there life outside of the planet earth what is the origin of the universe so all these philosophical questions i saw physics as a tool to answer them what were your first steps in learning math and physics outside of a traditional university setting i remember one time i was reading a book about learning physics from an Italian physicist named Carlo Rovelli. And he said something very interesting. He said, we learn the most when we are in vacation from university. And I was thinking, man, it's so true. Like when I took vacation, I didn't just play soccer or hang out with my friends, but I also studied physics and math. It was a pleasure. So when I was not structured in university classes and a lot of things to do, a lot of activities at university, I had a lot of free time to just search, just fish around. So I think this freedom, when you are self-driven, it can really take you to learn a lot by yourself. What resources, books, online courses, forums have you found most helpful in your self-study? Honestly, when I say this to people, like people in physics and mathematics who are researchers or PhD students, they laugh at me. Not all of them, but many of them. But one of the best resources for learning is YouTube. Because you get visual explanations of things that are sometimes very complex. But not only YouTube, like from Stack Overflow, Stack Exchange, Wikipedia. Like nowadays with ChatGPT, you can learn. Of course, you're not gonna get a very detailed, deep explanation from most of these sources. However, it's a very good start. And then you can go deeper with more technical books. What were some of the biggest challenges you faced by learning independently? Of course, the biggest challenge is the fact that you don't have a guidance. If you have a problem, you don't know how to solve. You spend hours and hours trying to solve, you can't do it. You don't have anybody who already did it before or who knows how to solve this problem to come to you and give you the solution like that. So you need to be more proactive. However, I think that this is part of creating a character of a true researcher. A true researcher is not the guy who, okay, I need to find this solution for this problem. Let me go to this source because I'm sure I'm gonna find the solution here. No, it's not like that. But when you learn how to look for the answer, when you learn how to ask the right questions, then you become a true researcher, in my opinion. Are there aspects of a university education, <clears throat> such as networking or collaborative projects, that you feel are challenging to replicate in a self-learning environment? Yes, I think so. I think that this is one of the positive points about university. When you talk to people from different areas of math and physics, you learn how to think in a different way. Way. And this really, really helps you to solve problems that sometimes there is no easy answer. You learn how to think outside of the box. However, I think that we still can have the same. We still can build a community online. And by the way, this is one of the goals of my YouTube channel. Most of the YouTube channels we see nowadays of math and physics, you go there to learn. So you go to the channel. Ah, okay, I learned from this. I, I'm not here to teach you only. I want to build a community such that you're gonna teach me. Sometimes I'm gonna say something in a video that is gonna be wrong and I'm okay with that. Why? Because I don't know everything. I'm not perfect. I want you to comment in the videos. Be nice, please. I appreciate you if you're nice. And this way we learn from each other. And please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment if you have something that you disagree, that you agree, whatever. I just wanna learn from you. How are physics and mathematics gonna advance without university? If we're talking about mathematics and theoretical physics, we can pretty much do research the same way or maybe even better without university, without a structure, without this, this box being inside of the same standard for everybody. When you give people freedom and build a community at the same time, especially with internet, connecting people from all over the world, I don't think you need university. I think university is actually a box that prevents people from learning. You create people who are very dependent on others, very dependent on a structure. You're basically asking permission to do math 
and physics. Now, if we go to experimental physics, then it's a different answer. To perform high level experiments, innovative results, you do need money. However, I still think that we need to develop as a society and think about a solution for this. What role, if any, do you see for universities or formal education in the future of learning physics and mathematics? university is completely useless in this case because especially if you want to be a researcher you need to learn how to do it by yourself learning how to be proactive to interact with other researchers and to fish around the information you need to solve a problem so i think universities will have to pass through a very deep transformation learning from online sources is definitely the future if not the present already the way it is nowadays it's not gonna work for the future how do you stay motivated and disciplined in your self-directed study of physics and mathematics without the external structure of university. In the beginning, you're going to struggle a lot, as I did. But if you have a very strong motivation inside of you, it's a problem you want to solve to help society, or it's something you really want to know, you want to learn because you enjoy the process, then you're going to be able to be self-disciplined. What about other people who don't have university degrees? How can they gain respect from academia? That's why so many people want to get a PhD because a person doing research in theoretical physics and mathematics by himself, by herself, is not respected nowadays. However, we should change this mentality. We should have more brave people who want to step up and say, you know what, I can do research. I don't need to ask permission to do theoretical physics and mathematics. What led you to the belief that one doesn't need university education to learn physics and mathematics effectively? What helped me was to understand that every time that I was in a structure of university, and I've been many years in university, I didn't learn that much. I learned, okay, but not that much as when I had freedom. When I had freedom, okay, I have a problem. I want to solve this problem. I have all the books that I can search online. I have all the forums online. When you have this freedom, you can just fish and, and, and look for the answer. You don't need to know everything to solve a specific problem. In university, the problem is that you do courses that even as a researcher, they are completely useless. But when you give people freedom, you can definitely get very positive outcomes. <laughs>